well let us start this chapter that is a control and a coordination okay so uh, as we have seen in life processes how the different maintenance processes occurred but to have a balanced life individuals life has to be properly controlled and internally coordinated so that is what we are going to understand in this chapter control and coordination so let us introduce what we know <clears throat> see we see different moments as I'm moving now my hands are moving so I'm holding a pain in a different way and moving my hand in a different way likewise uh, we see uh, a seed uh, germinates and it comes out of the soil uh, that is a kind of movement uh, now that is related to growth again if you see uh, a very simple example uh, the story of cat and mouse you see cat running you see mouse running so the story different is there I mean uh, cat is in search of food and a mouse is in search of life to get saved so all these are movements even if you understand that how animals do cutting chewing or we smile at a joke something tells our mind to give that gesture and even if you see that you're sitting in a class and uh, you want to call a friend uh, and the class is going on uh, you you just don't uh, shout the name of your friend you simply whisper something else so that mental uh, what you call alertness of that situation uh, to whisper rather than calling has some kind of mental uh, balance so how this mental balance physical balance and the balance of movement balance of uh, coordinating the things all together lies in this mechanism of a human system that is control and coordination so this system is governed by uh, the nervous system of us in animals and this nervous system doesn't work based on only uh, nervous cells it is in hand in hand coordination with the muscular system also so this in fact consists of the nervous tissue and muscular tissue i hope we have seen in the last year what are different kind of tissue so what does this nerve cells or nerve tissue does they detect the environmental stimulus now what is environmental stimulus suppose a flashlight comes on my eyes right now i'll close my eyes or if suppose the temperature falls too much down my uh, hairs on the hands becomes like an antenna or suppose uh, here the temperature increases to 40 uh, 41 degrees celsius i start sweating this response of the body to such stimulus of the environment is being taken inside received by the nerve system cells in our body okay so with the help of what they receive with the help of receptors or dendrites so if you see the structural and functional unit of nervous system this neuron it has these dendrites or the receptors that brings or receives the information from the environment to get proceed in the brain and do the activity by muscular system so where they are located basically they are located in our sensory system like the skin ear nose tongue and eyes so what kind of nerves they are if suppose i can smell something in my nose it is because of the uh, what you call sensory neurons in my nose they are called olfactory i can detect changes in light by my eyes by optic neurons i can feel the touch sensation in my skin by tactile neurons and again if i can differentiate between the voice of me and somebody else it is because of the auditory neurons again i can uh, taste a different kind of food that uh, by tongue by the help of gustatory neurons so what is the mechanism how we detect it or how we do respond to the environmental stimulus taken by the dendrite of our nerve cells see the dendrite or the uh, receiving fact of this neuron uh, receives the information from the environment from outside okay then it sets up a chemical reaction and generate an electrical impulse now this electrical impulse from this dendrite goes inside where 
it travels inside the cyton or the cell body. So this is the cell body of that neuron. And from here, it moves to the axon. This long part is nothing but axon. And then from axon, it leads to the terminal end where it has to release the information to next neuron. And then they release the information in the form of neurotransmitter and where it is being released this neurotransmitter or chemical information generated by one neuron releases from its terminal end so that the dendrites of another neuron receives it from where from the terminal end of the neuron which received the information and the place where the first neuron releases neurotransmitter and the dendrites of another neuron receives this information that place is called as synapse or gap junction between the two neurons now this receiving this neurotransmitter this similar impulse is generated in the next neuron which goes to brain brain process is and decide what action to be taken so an effector signal is being sent to the muscles with the help of motor neurons so the neuron for muscular act are the motor neuron and in this way action is being accomplished for example if i am feeling this tactile response which is painful i can feel that in my brain now this neuron has sent a signal to my brain that this is something teasing we have to take care of it so my brain now sends a signal to where to the muscles where I am pressing it to remove it so that this action is accomplished with the help of what sensory neurons with the help of motor neuron and simply the action is being accomplished with the help of control and coordination by this sensory structural and functional unit of nervous system neuron so what does the parts this neuron have simply you remember the shortcut that is cat says do not shy okay so C for here, cyton or cell body. This is cyton or cell body. A for axon. This long part is the axon. T for the terminal knob where it releases the neurotransmitter. <coughs> this D stands for the dendrites that receives the information from the environment. And this L is nothing but the neurotransmitter which is the chemical information sent by the neuron and S stands for the synapse or gaps between the two neurons. Thank you.